So, water heater quits in the trailer. What am I going to do? Well, we got to switch her out. And so today on Tim Tackles It, changing out a water heater. How hard can it be? Brute, we're going to be taking, uh, first of all, to a quick look at it. We've made sure the gas is turned off, the propane's off, in other words. And uh, we'll start by disconnecting the gas valve to the lower left there. Okay, so first step for me was uh, the big rubber grommet that goes around the gas line coming from inside the RV. So I thought, well, I'll dig that caulking out there first before opening up the gas line and possibly getting any dirt and contamination in there. So next, using a three-quarter inch wrench, just crack that fitting open, which is on the gas line. And as you can see, it uh, unscrews well before receding back into that rubber rum just a little bit. Okay, so next we'll remove the anode or drain plug from the water heater so we can get the water out of it and that will make it possible for us to connect the water, disconnect the water lines on the inside. Okay, so we'll next take out those two long screws that go from the face frame into the body of the water heater themselves itself. So you see I pull out one on the left side and then there's one here on the on the right. So those two come out, followed by the screws that are on the face frame itself or attach the face frame itself to the outside of the trailer. So using a slim ply pry bar I'm able to get myself, uh, get that face frame tight, loosened away from the body of the trailer. Uh, there's some mastic or uh, sticky uh, goo in there that's holding it together. So we'll kind of work our way around so we don't end up bending it. Okay, so now that the uh, face frame is off and the fasteners are all out and the drain the tank is drained, we can then take off that lower fitting on the inside uh, so we don't have water coming out into the floor of the trailer on the inside. Okay, so with the water heater out of the unit, uh, we now have this uh, outer frame or, uh, that you will need to clean up. There's uh, that gooey, sticky, gray mastic that's all around the perimeter. So we'll just give that a clean up and get it ready for reuse with the new heater. Okay, so the same goes for the body of the trailer itself where that frame was sitting. There's the same gooey mastic and caulking all over it. It looks kind of dirty and grubby looking, so we're going to clean that up. So the new installation looks nice. So as this goes back in, they're real careful of that gas line because you've got to kind of keep it from receding back into the trailer as it's got to protrude through that face frame as you get it into place. So a little bit fiddly getting the gas line through the orifice or opening it has to fit through while squeezing the water heater into place. I should mention I took that face frame and I uh, gave it a little sand and did a luminized paint on it so it freshened it up and made it look new again and now just adding that caulking to the back side of it to seal it up against the side of the trailer.
I started with two long screws that go on each side of the heater that pull the face frame and the heater together into one unit. Also grabbed a little RV white spray paint and spray painted the cover for the water heater so it too looks new now. Then an additional bead of caulking around that face frame just to be sure and also at the bottom of it where it um, face frame meets the body of the water heater as well just so we get a good watertight seal there. So just some dishwashing liquid and soap uh, and some soapy water to be able to uh, check for gas leaks make sure that propane line is good and tight and doesn't leak. There are two fittings you need off the back of the old water heater for the water line connections. So make sure you take those out before you dispose of that water heater. So one of them was just a little bit uh, snug. So a couple of wax with a rubber mallet seemed to loosen her up. And we finally got that out and ready to put into the new water heater. You can add a little thread sealant to these fittings as you put them in to keep them from leaking once they're snugged up. You just have to now make sure you get the right water line on the right connection and that's pretty straightforward if you're using existing water lines. But just so you know, the pole line at the bottom is really the one that comes in from the water filler neck or from the water tank itself, the storage tank. So remember that rubber grommet that was around the gas line? There's a little slit in that to allow you to get it around the, the gas line itself. But that should be siliconed up to prevent pests from getting in and making it uh, airtight. Overall, putting in the water heater was fairly straightforward. Bit of a wrestling match getting it in and out and getting some of those fittings, removing them off the old heater and putting them on the new heater. Again, a little bit challenging, but nothing to hard basic hand tools. Uh, if you're nervous at all about handling the propane line, then maybe get somebody who's comfortable with it. But really it is a matter of just making sure that fitting is threaded back on cleanly and that it doesn't leak. And the way to do that is as I showed in the video with that uh, diluted soapy water, dishwashing liquid and water in a squirt bottle, you'll see bubbles form. If the propane's turned on, it'll start to bubble and where you'll see that uh, there's some leakage, give it another little bit of snug snug up. Don't over tighten them though. Uh, they don't have to be Herculean strength. Just snug them up until they're not leaking good and then that's fine. Aside from that, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful for you and uh, if it was, please like and subscribe and I'll keep trying to post videos as I tackle more things.